My final review at long last. Before we begin, I just want to give a huge thank you to all of you for watching these videos. Whether you just saw a couple of them or you've been watching them all, I really appreciate it. It's not easy bringing out a video a day. So, uh, yes, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into this final review. This time, for Women Talking. Would it be a good idea before we list the pros and cons of staying in fighting to talk about exactly what it is we're fighting for? It's obvious. We're fighting for our safety and for our freedom from attacks. But what would that mean to us? Perhaps we need a statement which describes what we want the colony to be like after winning the fight. Women Talking is based off the 2018 novel of the same name written by Miriam Toes. The novel is based off real events that occurred in a Mennonite community in Bolivia called the Manitoba Colony. These communities had strict regulations on how their men, women, and children were to be treated, and oftentimes each was expected to fill a role that almost reminds me personally of what I expect the old pilgrim days to have been like. In other words, if you weren't a guy, it wasn't good. The book went on to receive stellar reviews, was a shortlisted finalist for the Governor General's Award for English Language Fiction, as well as longlisted for the International Dublin Literary Award. And, of course, was adapted into a film being directed by Sarah Pauly, which is what we're here to talk about today. Sarah herself has quite a career both in front of and behind the camera, including directing Away From Her and the documentary Stories We Tell. She's done good work, so it seems appropriate for her to tackle such a serious matter. Does she succeed? Well, it's nominated for Best Picture, so you tell me. But we caught them. We caught them! Yes, you did. Then why are you making it so complicated? This is very, very boring. The story follows a group of women who have a discussion about what to do after it is discovered that for a long time now, a group of men in their community have been drugging and raping them, leaving many of them pregnant, some by their own siblings. As the community is very strict about women's roles and men have gone off to bail the ones that have been arrested, it's up to these women to decide if they should forgive their attackers, fight back against the men in their society, or leave altogether. The race is on as they must make a decision before the men return. So let's start by talking about the performances, as this cast is absolutely fantastic. Of course, you have your leads, Rooney Mara, Claire Foy, and Jesse Buckley, who are great. But a lot of the names you may not recognize, like Sheila McCarthy and Judith Ivey, are also really good in their respective roles. Each of them has plenty of time to shine and have scenes dedicated to them and just how this attack has affected them and their psyche. They all do a fantastic job and if anything, you're definitely going to walk away with appreciation for the performances here. The only one that I'm not 100% in agreement with is Ben Wishaw, who is a teacher who's writing and chronicling the discussions for future generations to learn from. I get his character is more of a gentle soul showing that not all men think and act the same way, but good lord, is this person very annoying at points. And it's not that Ben himself is bad, but when you have a character that is crying over every little thing, spouting these lines as if they're supposed to be so prophetic, or generally making rash decisions over something, I don't know, it does get tiresome. And that's not to say that men can't be weak or uncertain or make these decisions. It's just done so over the top that, honestly, I would have been annoyed no matter who was in that position. Now, I do understand that that is more of a me thing, as many others have praised Ben and felt he was very worthy of a nomination for his role. So, take that as someone who is probably speaking in the minority here. The others, though, I'm completely on board with. At first, I was actually surprised they did not get more recognition for the performances, but I think something that holds it back is just how similar each one looks in their uniforms. 
I believe someone who may not be as knowledgeable with these actors may find it hard to keep track of who is who, and it's probably why it hurt their nomination chances. There are also moments that I feel are going to end up rubbing people the wrong way, and please keep in mind, I'm not talking about like sexist assholes or just bigots in general, though people are always just going to be angry. But there are certain messages that I feel may get wrongly construed. For instance, there's a moment where one of the women say she could never be angry at the baby inside her despite it being the result of rape. And not just rape, mind you, incest rape. Now, especially with how the US is coping with the overturn of Roe v. Wade, it may come off as the movie telling you to love your baby no matter where it comes from, which can definitely turn some people off. I'm not saying that that's what the movie is telling us. It's just what that character feels, which is fine. But I can see others maybe turning it into something more, especially given the, the environment that we have right now. It is a part of our faith to forgive. We have always forgiven those who have wronged us. Why not now? Because now we know better. We will be excommunicated, forced to leave the colony in disgrace if we do not forgive these men. I hate movies that have a tint throughout a majority of its runtime. Uh, think of The Matrix with their dark hues, or that film with Mark Ruffalo, Dark Waters, that it's impossible to tell what time of day it is. This one doesn't have that big a problem since a big portion of the movie is at night, and thus doesn't keep that filter, but it is distracting in its first half. Apart from that, the movie is technically sound. The score by Hildur Gonadatir is very well done, and it's a shame it didn't receive an Oscar nomination. I can't say I was overly impressed by any other aspect of it, but it's not a movie that needs brilliant cinematography or fast-paced editing. A solid script with great acting is all that it really needed. And it definitely achieved that here. What if the men who are in prison are not guilty? Mother. Oh, oh Chad. Why are you asking if Dude, shush. We caught one of them. <laughs> I saw him. Women Talking is a solid flick that will definitely have you thinking about this scenario and what you would do if you were in their place. I can't say it tackles the subject in a way that warrants an immediate watch or maybe even longevity in the overall problem that is prevalent all over the world, but it's another good reminder that women aren't always treated in the way that they should be treated. No, sometimes it's much worse than we can possibly imagine, and it needs to change. For Women Talking, I give it a 4 out of 5, with a recommendation to see it. It's worth a watch just for the message it relays and the discussion it's bound to bring up. But as a film, it's not the strongest in the lineup of Best Picture. Done! Oh my god, finally finished! Uh, once again, a huge thank you to everyone for watching these. I, I know they didn't all come out the prettiest, but you know what? I just have fun making these and just sharing my opinions of all the films and... Yeah, it, it's not over yet. The reviews may be done, but now we got to get to my final Oscar predictions. So come back tomorrow for that final video. Until then, everybody, stay safe out there and have a good one.